This section has a look at where two lanes of traffic merge into one. This often is a point of conflict where drivers in the two separate lanes try to vie to get ahead at the point where the traffic merges. In the following video, I demonstrate a simple rule or guideline to follow in order to make such merging a lot smoother. For people though, no doubt there are those who genuinely don't understand the concept and so we have to ask a question such as this, do you have to let merging traffic in? But for most I think what it boils down to is just simple courtesy and consideration shown by each driver. There is a section on the website under thinking and attitude which highlights that when we courteous, we considerate of others, we give people a gap, traffic flows a lot smoother and it prevents the escalation of any situation from arising or escalating to a point of either aggressiveness or road rage. This video, as per the introduction, is to demonstrate how two lanes of traffic can merge smoothly into one. For the benefit of YouTube and adhering to the community guidelines, note that this is an instructional video showing both what not to do as well as what can be done to prevent a situation from escalating either to aggressive driving or to road rage. So in the animation we're going to have a look at what is known as a zipper merge. So I'll explain what that is. We'll have a look at the animation first of all then we'll come back and highlight a few points both from the perspective of drivers in the main lane as well as the perspective of drivers in the merging lane. So here we have two lanes of traffic merging and note how smoothly that is done. So what is it that makes such merging smooth? Well let's go back and analyze that. Let's just progress this to a point. Now notice first of all the spacing of the vehicles. So you'll see that there's enough space between the various vehicles. Now this seems almost counterintuitive when we're driving along because what we find is that drivers try to close the gap, maybe thinking that by doing so they're minimizing the distance or this, the spacing of the vehicles which would stretch out the line of traffic, but that's not the case. When there's enough space between vehicles, what happens is that vehicles are able to maintain their speed. As soon as vehicles start to bunch up, then invariably people have to put on brakes to avoid hitting someone ahead of them and that has just a compounding effect on the rest of the traffic and so that results in the slowdowns that we find on the freeways. Now to get this across to people is almost impossible, so not everybody's going to adhere to this, so we're still going to have the problem, but as far as your driving is concerned, it's going to make it a lot safer cause less frustration and in the video to follow we'll see what happens uh, when we don't follow such a, a guideline or rule. So what is the zipper merge? So the zipper merge is where every alternate vehicle now is given the gap to come into the line. So we'll find that this vehicle is ahead so it can move into the merged lane or the main lane. This vehicle would allow the vehicle ahead to, to move ahead into its path Likewise, this vehicle would allow this vehicle to go ahead and so it goes down the line. So it's like a zipper that's actually merging. Every alternate vehicle from each lane is given the gap in order to merge into that single lane. So that's a one point. The second point is that aside from the spacing, the vehicles maintain their speed as they're traveling. And this is especially important for the drivers coming from the merging lane. So as was also highlighted a couple of times in previous videos, the drivers in the lane or the side lane that are to be merged from need to ensure that when they're merged into the main lane, they don't slow down any traffic or vehicles that are behind them. So that's very important. They have to be traveling at either the same speed as the vehicles in the main lane or even, or even traveling faster than the vehicles that are in the main lane. Because if a vehicle from the side lane is traveling faster than a vehicle in the main lane, then it's easier for that vehicle to slow down for the vehicle ahead of him than what it is to try and accelerate if he was going too slowly 
to get ahead of the vehicle that is actually behind him. So vehicles have to maintain the same speed and then we find that it's easier to merge. Uh, but also these vehicles need to indicate, so put on the indicators or turning signals well before the time and that shows the intentions of wanting to merge so the vehicles behind them can see and give them that necessary gap. And so when drivers do this and there's the zipper merge, every alternate vehicle, not this vehicle trying to push ahead, close the gap so as to not allow space for either that vehicle or that vehicle to get in, but each alternate vehicle, just to repeat the point, each alternate vehicle given the chance to actually merge. And so we find that it's smooth and it doesn't slow down the traffic at all if it's done this way. In this clip, it's it's a bit lengthy, but it's to, to demonstrate a point. So if we have a look at these two lanes of traffic, now they're merging into one. And so if each alternate driver allows the, the vehicle alongside him to take the gap, well, then there'll be a, a smooth flow of traffic. But we'll see in this clip that that's not the case. I'm just going to progress it. Now, at this point, you can see this vehicle's ahead of the pickup truck. So he would allow that vehicle in. This vehicle, in turn, has the pickup truck ahead of him. So he should allow the truck into the gap. This vehicle has that vehicle slightly ahead of him. He should then allow that vehicle in and vice versa, this vehicle should allow that vehicle in. So it forms that zipper merge. But we'll see that that's not what happens here and we see how the situation then escalates which could very easily have been avoided had each driver shown consideration and courtesy towards another driver. So this driver's at fault, you can see he's highlighted over here. He's trying to push ahead and not allow the pickup truck in. So it doesn't allow that alternate vehicle the space. And this is what I find often happens with people. Uh, they don't allow the gap. They try and push right up to the vehicle ahead of them and squeeze out any vehicles alongside. I don't know why uh, people do that. Instead of just hanging back a bit, it's not going to cost them much in the way of time, but uh, just show consideration and de-escalate or calm a situation which as we'll see uh, would otherwise escalate into something a little bit more serious. So this driver continues to persist to try to squeeze into the gap there. You'll see as the video progresses now you've got contention between these two and now the emotions start building up and the the level of anger rises and so now they become uh, less inhibited uh, more radical in what they prepared to do because the emotions are getting the better of them uh, this chap you could see he's got enough space at the back here so he could easily have just filled into the gap uh, but continues to persist in trying to push ahead of the pickup truck So for the drive of the pickup truck, he would have been in the right to have continued, but he could likewise have also tried to de-escalate the situation, let this driver in, and I know it goes against our grade perhaps to allow those that are selfish uh, to gain the advantage and we would try to teach them a lesson, a lesson. Uh, but it's definitely not worth it uh, because it could have a very negative outcome and so not worth the effort, either in the way of uh, damages to a vehicle or perhaps even lives being threatened. So you need to just calm down, uh, try and be patient, allow others to, to go ahead and then there won't be a problem. So we see the chaps climbed out his vehicle, uh, it's, it's, has become physical, aggressive, and yet the situation could easily have been avoided. So this is what not to do. We can see how quickly a situation can arise, and it could have been even worse than this. Maybe the driver in that vehicle had a firearm, and who knows what could have happened. So we try and avoid such a situation. 
in the next clip. Uh, this demonstrates what we also had in a previous video where we've got an on-ramp or an entrance ramp. We've got traffic from the main lane wanting to merge into the on-ramp section because no doubt there's a fork ahead and so the vehicle's wanting to move across. And so the same would apply. So whether it's two vehicles merging into the same lane or we've got vehicles from two separate lanes wanting to merge into one lane, uh, then the zipper principle can apply as well. So we allow every alternate vehicle in, allow enough of a gap uh, between ourselves and the vehicle ahead so that other vehicles do have that space to be able to merge. So we see the driver has allowed that vehicle in and so it's it's this vehicle to come in, then it's that vehicle's chance, then it's this next vehicle's chance, and then it's the camera's chance. So every alternate vehicle. So the camera now then allows that vehicle in. So any vehicles that are now in the right-hand lane wanting to move in uh, should actually allow the camera as the next vehicle to have the chance to go ahead. But we see this is not the case, and so a vehicle comes up from the left side and tries to force his way across. So it hasn't allowed that a zipper merge principle to apply here, but also tries to squeeze ahead uh, behind this vehicle. And so that causes a bit of a conflict. In this clip, we can see that the, the truck's actually in the main lane. You can see the road marking there indicates that this lane is now merging into the, the right lane, which is the main lane. And so this driver should really uh, give way, but instead tries to forge ahead and uh, comes off second best.
please like, subscribe, and get notified.